Navy and Hearts of Iron Explained. Navy is an important aspect of the game. Protecting sea lanes or denying them to your enemy can offer you a significant advantage. Your navy can also be used to help naval invasions with shore bombardment and extend your air range to parts of the map where you do not control an airfield. So, how do you use your navy? To start, let's take a look at the strategic naval map mode by hitting F2 or this button here. In the top right, your divisions have been replaced by fleets. This part can be particularly confusing when you first start out because of how they're organized, but bear with me and I'll cover the basics. Your ships are organized into fleets. Each fleet can have an admiral and up to 10 task forces. You can see here that we have three fleets and a reserve fleet. This is a task force. Each task force is capable of carrying out a mission. You can split task forces by selecting the number of ships you want and clicking the empty space beside it. You can also merge task forces by selecting as many as you want and right clicking one of them. Them. There's also an automatic distribution button, but you may wish to organize your own fleets. The task force composition editor allows you to change the desired number of ships in the task force. By default, new ships will automatically join the reserve fleet, unless otherwise set to join a specific task force. Also, keep in mind that you will need manpower to deploy ships. You can assign task forces to missions by first selecting the task force, then clicking the mission you wish to do, and right click the region or regions you want them to operate in. It is important to know that each task force can only be in one region at a time, so when they are assigned to multiple zones, they will periodically move between them. You can also manually move a fleet by unassigning the mission and manually right clicking the sea tile or the port you wish them to go to. A fleet speed is based off of its slowest ship and you cannot operate beyond your task force range. The range of each task force is indicated by these red striped lines. Not to be confused by these red striped lines, which means that you've restricted the sea zone. You can, however, move to another friendly port beyond your range. Task force can do one of the following missions at a time. Patrol, strike force, convoy raiding, convoy escort, naval invasion support, and depending on whether or not you have the Man the Guns DLC, mine laying and mine sweeping. Patrol sets your task force to patrol an area to look for enemy ships. Generally, you don't want to have your main surface fleet doing this, but rather a small task force with high detection. You want your main fleet to be harbored in a nearby port on strike force. When your patrol task force detects a fleet, your fleets on strike force will come out and join the battle. Convoy raiding and escort are pretty straightforward. Subs are good to raid with, just try to avoid raiding in shallow seas. Convoys can be escorted by anything, so it's a good idea to use cheap destroyers. Usually the AI will avoid battles with convoys that are escorted, but if you find that you're losing too many ships, you can always slap on some depth charges on those destroyers. I'll also go over ship types, designs, and fleet composition in a later video. In the meantime, I want to mention a few important things that you need to know going forward. Destroyers and light cruisers are screens. Essentially in battle, they will take damage before your capital ships, assuming your positioning is high enough. Heavy cruisers and battleships are capital ships. They typically have the big guns. They also screen your carriers. You need a minimum of 3 to 1 screens to capital ships to get 100% screening. Some people, including myself, recommend 4 to 1 because screens have a tendency to sink and it's good to have extra. CAS, tactical bombers, and naval bombers all have naval targeting and attack. These planes can be used as a cost-effective way of destroying ships. In fact, I sank the hood myself with CAS. And yes, I have to mention it, submarines 3s and 4s with snorkels and torpedoes are so ridiculously overpowered for what they cost that they probably should be nerfed.